Welcome back everybody to Forza Motorsport. So we're going to be doing the Premium Performance Championship today. Um, we're going to do three of the six races in this episode and then we're doing the other three in the next one. So um, yeah, this is the first time we've had six races I believe. Oh no, Built for Sport also had six. It's a bit weird that they changed from five races to six. So I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, we should be in the most powerful cars, or at least the quickest cars that we've had in uh, any championship so far. So uh, yeah, let's uh, see what it's all about. Over the last 20 years, top manufacturers in Italy, Germany and England have produced premium performance coupes possessing an exciting combination of power, handling and understated Intended for serious drivers who love mechanical excellence, gorgeous body lines, and a long, winding road. Functional and comfortable for relaxed road trips, more than enough power for aggressive track roads. And when built to the next level, these cars transform into exhilarating track weapons that a skilled driver can wield to dominate. Right, so it looks like we've got some really, really powerful cars to choose from here. So we've got the likes of a TVR Griffith, Porsche 911 uh, Carrera S, Lotus Amira, Jaguar F-Type R Coupe, the Ferrari Roma and the Ferrari California T, the BMW i8, the Bentley Continental Supersports, and the Aston Martin Vantage and the Aston Martin V12 Vantage. So, um, I'm not sure why there's two of them there. Um, yeah, I mean it's probably the least powerful car here, but I am kind of being pulled towards the Lotus Amira to be honest. It is the newest car here that's been added to Forza Motorsport, as you can see. Only the one from 2023. In fact, it's only one of two that is from the 2020s. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really, really cool car to be honest. I really like the amount of power it's got. It doesn't weigh very much. It's comfortably going to be the lightest car here. Ah, no, the TVR is slightly lighter and has more power, but that's TVR, that's to be expected, I guess. Um, but yeah, does it have better handling than the TVR? Yes, it does, and braking, although worse acceleration. But I think it's going to be a good car to ease our way into this championship. So, uh, yeah, let's get the Amira. It's also one of the cheapest ones here. Uh, blue, uh, yeah, let's go for blue. don't think we've had a blue car so far on this, uh, on this game. Right. Where are we racing first? Circuit de ba Barcelona, Catalonia, right? We're still on six for opponent difficulty. We'll keep it on there. I know we uh, had some issues with, uh, you know, the difficulty in the previous episode, but I put that down to maybe the fact that the car wasn't good enough, or I was just getting used to that, you know, that difficulty. So, yeah. So let's see uh, what this. Race is going to have in store for us. So, yeah, as per usual, we have to skip all of this practice crap just because for some reason they don't have the choice of choosing between practice and just starting the race in the main menu. It just makes no sense to me for that to not be the case. Especially if you're giving people the option to skip practice anyway, so why not just have them skip practice without having to go into it to start with? It makes no sense to me. It's a real uh, bugbear of mine. Um, but yeah, let's eventually get started when we get through all of the menus and the loading screens and the cinema uh, cinematics. Right, so we're going to be in 12th place to start with. We'll lighten our load with the fuel. Get us down to 6 laps. That's where I like to be. Just a couple of laps ahead. Right, so there we go. Right, so we're lighter now than we would have been normally with the uh, fuel being higher, but that's the only uh, difference we've made to this car. It's completely bone stop otherwise. So yeah, we're going to have the least power here. But we are one of the lightest as well. The TVR is the only one that's going to be lighter than us. It's nice to see a lot of these in B class, or are they? Or A class even. Are we in B class? Yeah, 
Yeah, we're only in the one in B class. Alright, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle to start with. <laughs> but, you know, that's a good challenge to see what this car can do when uh, quite clearly outclassed. the lightest here as well, but we've comfortably got the smallest engine. We have the least power. This is basically a David versus Goliath kind of goings on here. Slightly muscle my way past. Yeah, I've been wanting to try this car on a track ever since it was added to Forza Horizon 5 so jumping at the opportunity basically just to try it out on this game. So far we are doing okay. Although as per usual the AI seems to overreact when you're on the inside. I've had it so many times where they just seem to want to jump into the nearest, you know, tire wall. Yeah, for a car with less than 4.0 handling, this is actually doing pretty well. It's mostly decent turning, although uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic amount of understeer there. Especially from Lotus. So after the first lap, we're in fourth place. A little bit of a bruise on the left-hand side there, but we're all right. We will need to bump this car into A-class at the very least for the next race. So we will do some upgrades in that regard. Well, because of the woeful upgrade system, we probably won't be able to upgrade this too much. Gaining or not on the third place. We will be now after we made that bit of a mistake. Breaking reasonably heavily there for some reason. DVR making a lot of noise. Will outpace me on the straight because it's just got 80 extra horsepower and a lot more in the way of torque. Plus, obviously, it is lighter by a few hundred pounds, so. Yeah, it's not gotten massively far ahead considering all of that. We are better from the corners, as we know.
for a way past That's the main issue. too soon unfortunately and I don't want to be getting any penalties because that can really screw your racing up. Massive amount of extra power is helping him get back ahead. You got this. Get a podium position, I'll be happy with that. That TVR is monstrously quick compared to us in the straight line. Well, we haven't got a win to start this championship off with, but we are in the, on the podium, so that is something. Especially when you consider we're only in B class, and pretty much everyone else here is in A class, as you can see. the Both of the Porsches are 46 ahead of me in terms of PI, which is obviously quite a lot. And even that TVR is 43 ahead, and as you saw, that was primarily down to its massive amounts of extra speed and acceleration. So. I think we did pretty well there. I think there's only one or two of us in B class yet, yeah, another Amira and a Bentley Continental Super Sport. So, and we did obviously far better than they did. So, uh, yeah, gained nine places in that race. So we've got 23 points to start this championship off with. So let's get into the upgrade menu. See what we can give this car. So we've got tyre compound that's unlocked. Two and a four between tyres and that a lot, to be honest. Although these only take 200 up. So maybe we can get a little bit of extra power out of something. Nope, that's 200. I hate this upgrade system. I absolutely love it. We'll get a bit of extra power, 15 extra horsepower and 11 extra pounds feet of torque while the weight goes down 2 pounds. So that'll help us to the acceleration and speed. Uh, brakes, can we get anything? No. Nope, can't even get an anti-roll bars or drivetrain or anything else because 
This is the worst upgrade system in the world. Right, so there we go. Right. So let's move on to the next race. So we're at Watkins Glen International Circuit for five laps. So let's get there and see what happens. Right, so here we are at Watkins Glen. So this is quite a quick circuit. There's very little in the way of heavy braking. So, uh, yeah, we might well uh, struggle a little bit given that we, even with the extra power that we've given this car, we don't have the most power here at 415 horsepower. So, yeah, could well struggle a little bit, but maybe with the uh, handling that we've got on the go, which is fairly good, we'll be able to keep up what speed we can generate. That's the hope. Because obviously a lot of these cars here are a lot heavier, a lot bulkier. Not quite as agile as we are. So let's see. from behind by a Ferrari because we're not quick enough apparently. Yeah, the AI seems to struggle on circuits like this. It used to be the case on for the Box 4 or something that had the Alp circuit, which was, a, you know, basically a made up track. And yeah, you really struggled on something like that. It's the same with Maple Valley as well. You just struggle on these fast orientated corners. You seem to want to brake a lot. It's really odd that it's still not something we've managed to get out of the AI. It's almost like they have you know, fear instilled into them to to the max, to be honest, because a lot of these corners you don't need a heavy brake on. And then in the corners you do need to brake on, you only need to give a light touch just to keep the front going round. There's very little need to heavy brake. But the TVR is steaming up beside us. Luckily we just got to a corner in time. last race. amounts of understeer there. That's a corner I always seem to struggle on. Just because it looks like one you can carry a lot of speed into, but not unless you've got the handling you can't. Slightly like take those little bits of yellow here and just before bit too seriously because obviously they're indicating that you might need to break but instead of might needing to break they always just do break and we seem to go off the board with it. A little bit of oversteer in this, a little bit hairy. I think the difficulty is probably a little bit weighted in the favour of the AI. But as we've seen when we knock it back to five, the AI are a little bit on the weaker side of things, so 
Can we not like have a 5.5 or something? Because we need an in between because it's like a pendulum, it's one or the other, quite frankly, and it's really rather not fun, if I'm being honest. Granted, I might well have not done myself any favours by picking this car, but. The AI should be balanced in that regard when you know you're in a car that is clearly substantially slower. through there than last time. Just left the TVR a bit further behind than it was before. We're not gaining on that Porsche in second place. They are not much heavier than we are, but they have more in the way of power. Obviously it is at the end of the day a Porsche, you know, they're not slouches in terms of their performance, so even in those more basic Carrera ones, they're still pretty damn sharpish. don't have the straight line speed. Might well have... Don't know what the hell happened there. Might well have a lot of the handling that we need, but... Without a good rate of speed to you know, complement that. Just left in the dust. million miles behind but obviously we are behind enough and you know being by behind by a second or ten seconds is still being behind so it's not helpful at all. Last lap. 
being fairly consistent in terms of the times that we're making, but obviously they're not quick times, so again, consistency is good, but being faster will be better. we're going to finish on our best lap yet, but too little too late unfortunately. Interested to see what the times are compared to them. Yeah, we weren't a massive amount of time off the uh, Porsches to be honest, even with our uh, previous lap time be by about half a second or so. But yeah, just for some reason they're, you know, nearly 10 seconds ahead of us, so yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, let's uh, move on to the third race. We're somewhat behind and still in points because, yeah, those two uh, up front are, yeah, basically competing against one another and no one else. So, yeah, right, let's see what we can do in terms of performance. Let's see if we can break this portion up. What have we been given? Fuel system, spring and dampers, differential, transmission, flywheel. Right. Performance, performance. I'm feeling, do the front tires up and then shove whatever else we can in terms of power in the car. Exhaust is probably better than anything else. Yeah, that gives us another 25 extra horsepower and another 19 extra pound speed of torque, but it also, more crucially, also will wax out a lot of weight at 22 pounds, so that's every benefit basically as you can see it benefits everything speed acceleration being the main ones but handling and braking are hardly harmed either so hopefully that'll help us but as you can see we have nothing else we can do to the car so better front tires more power and a little bit less in the way of weight is all we can really do unfortunately so uh yeah let's move on to the third and final race for this episode so we're going to be at virginia international raceway the full circuit for 3.27 miles four laps Right, let's go. Right, so here we are. Hopefully with this extra power and lack of weight and slightly better grip up front, we can do uh, a bit better for this third and final race. But obviously we'll do it even better if we can at least whack out some weight with the fuel. So yeah, we only need about six laps or so. That should help. Right. We're still in 12th place, starting. I like to be in the middle of the group, it seems a bit cheaty to uh, whack us all the way up to third place to start with. Does that sound a bit more racy with that exhaust? Very tight circuit at parts this, so it makes overtaking kind of hard at times, oh, especially when you go off-road. 
Man, I don't need to go that far back. I so wish they'd upgrade the rewind system to make you let you choose a part that you want to rewind. Rather than forcing you all the way back just so they can get hit by an Aston Martin off road again. Both of those Aston Martins are hitting each other, which is not helpful. Being terminally slow through these corners, so I can't get past. Ferrari's going off. Feels like we've got better turning with those wider tyres up front now. Sorry, fellow Lotus. I'm getting some drafting with behind them. Feels like it. Come on. So not the best position we've had after a first lap, but considering the traffic jam that we had to deal with, it could be a lot worse. I think one of the Porsches isn't doing as well as they used to, or have done. There's only four of us up ahead and I can see the bottom three of them are. Aston Martin and two TVRs, so that means that one is only up front as a Porsche. Sneak around those two who have hit each other. Right, so we're back into a podium position. Come on, let's try and improve at least on third place. We've got the extra power, we've got the uh, reduction in weight, and we've got the additional uh, grip up front, so theoretically we should be able to we've beaten that TVR at least once before, or twice before even. Pretty sure it is the TVR, it looks like the same colours. Granted, even stock that TVR would have more power and torque than we do, but... Let's see what happens regardless. One thing we do need to improve is the brakes. I figured we'd slow down in time there, but evidently not. time to gain on second place because we spent pretty much all the first lap trying to get past everybody. Oh dear, and again we've got someone just steering in a fast corner, well a slowish corner like that. Seems to have plenty of grip in the uh, faster corners but the slower ones like that we seem to just run out of.
What's happened to third place? Second place even. What happened? I did not see what happened there. That is spooky. Where did they go? Let's concentrate so much on getting around that part of the course because it's quite a complex series of corners that I have no idea what happened to that TVR. I think it was the TVR, yeah, because I think it was that Porsche in first place. But they just vanished into the ether or had a massive crash that I did not notice. They're not even in third place. What the hell happened there? Well, that's their loss and our gain, so at least we will be doing better than the previous two races. I'm not sure if we can gain on first zone with only a little bit over a lap left. Well, get into second place for the championship overall, given that Porsche is nowhere else to be seen, and there wasn't that a massive amount of points in between us. Oh, a slight bit of a lapse of concentration there. TVR spurred off or went somewhere. Porsche is pretty much a rocket, quite frankly. Not sure what we're going to be able to do to try and get at least one win. Convincingly got second place, but yeah, Porsche is well ahead. Again. Well, let's see what that does for the points overall. No idea where that TVR came. Great race. He finished P2. Yeah, I think that's the guy in ninth. That's way back down there. And where's the other Porsche? Oh, it's a TVR in first. So both of the Porsches failed. Yeah, um, 10th place has dropped 8 places. Where's the other Porsche gone? Yeah, that guy in 20th, he dropped 19 places. What the hell happened to them? So yeah, we will gain quite a significant position, I should believe. Yes, we've shot into 1st place. But that TVR Griffith that we've uh, been dealing with in the previous two races is only a point behind, so... Still everything to play for for the next three races, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do there. Especially since upgrades are definitely going to play a part. If we can get, like, tyre compound or something in there, then, uh, yeah, we should hopefully solve that understeer. But yeah, as you can see, those Porsches drop drastically down. One of them's gone down three places. And... Yeah. No, yeah, one of them's gone down three places, and one of them's gone down two places, so... Yeah. They're less of a worry now, um, but not by a million miles, as you can see, because the third place is only three points behind, and fifth place is only about 13 points behind. So, 
Could still all switch around in the next few races, but regardless, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.